Well, Banjo was always a little bit of a different puppy. Uh, he was sort of not quite as attentive as the other ones. The others, other ones were starting to pick on him a little bit. Um, and we just sort of discovered it when we'd call him over for food uh, or for water or for just a general play. And we noticed he wasn't really looking at us. So the first time I saw Banjo, he was sitting in the corner of the pen by himself. And so James was holding him and he said to me, do you want him? And I said, oh, sure. Well, like thinking that he was kidding, but he's like, no, he's deaf. He needs to go to a good home. And it just, sort of broke my heart because I grew up on a property, I grew up around working dogs and I know sort of there's no place for them on a farm with machinery and stuff if they're deaf and if they can't listen to commands then I mean it's just it's not a safe environment and so now I'm going to take him home with me and we've really bonded and I love him. <laughs> We're really happy that he's gone to a good home. Obviously he's not going to be any good as a working dog, so he needed a really good family home and somebody that's going to give him a lot of extra TLC, um, especially at the early stages, as he's only eight weeks old now, he's going to need a lot of TLC and probably a bit more training than the other ones. Um, we came in early before work one day to have a look at the animals and little Banjo was over in the corner all by himself and no one was playing with him and he was really sad and I felt really bad for him. I thought it was sad because it means he doesn't have the same opportunities as the rest of them but it's really lovely that he now has the opportunity to be loved and cared by somebody else so it's good, he's going to a good home. In a couple more days the Ekka's going to pack up and all the animals are going to go back home to the country but this little guy is going to stay in the city with me.